Hey guys, have you ever felt stuck on the ACT reading section? Are you looking for the best way to totally improve your score? If so, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I coached a student from a 24 to a perfect 36 on the ACT reading section. My name is Brooke, if you're wondering who I am. I've been coaching the SAT and the ACT for over a decade and a half. I've written two books on the ACT math section. You can check those out on Amazon. I've also got a couple of courses for the ACT and the SAT at supertutortv.com. And we have a totally free mailing list at supertutortv.com slash subscribe where you can learn more about whatever we are covering this week. Additionally, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. So make sure you guys join us there and subscribe to our YouTube, of course. So let's talk about how to get a more awesome ACT reading score. So this student that I worked with a little while ago came to me and had the budget for just a couple of lessons. So I only did two private lessons with him. This student, full disclosure, the student also was on our online course for the ACT and used it pretty extensively. But the principles that I'm gonna talk about in this short video today are kind of the foundation that led him on a journey where he could kind of work on his score in a way that was meaningful and rebuild his habits so that he was approaching the test right and could get the score that he wanted. I sometimes liken ACT prep to weightlifting. Like if I'm your personal trainer, I can show you how to do a push-up really fast and easy, but you've got to do all those push-ups to build up your muscles, right? You've got to build the habit. You've got to build the muscle memory. You've got to do the homework. And that's kind of how I think you guys should view this video. You're not going to like watch this video and then get 12 points on the ACT. But the principles that I'm going to talk about, if you apply them in your own study and you practice, 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 and you put them into practice, you can really transform your score if they happen to apply to you. Let's just talk a little bit about why some students who are like A students who are doing really well, who happen to do really well on lots of sections of the exam, maybe you're over a 30 everywhere, and what it is that holds them up. And usually it has to do with approach. So especially if you're getting stuck around a 24, 23, 25, if you feel that you're like kind of hitting a ceiling there and you can't get above it, most of the time the reason is that you're not approaching the test properly. So the first thing that I like to say is the ACT is not like tests at school. And a lot of students just assume that they can approach this just like they would approach a multiple choice test at school. For multiple choice tests at school, most of the time your teachers are looking for you to identify information that you read previously in a closed book environment. What I mean by closed book is that you have to read the text and then you're not really allowed to go back to it, okay? Number two, you show up on test day and basically what you've gotta find is the information that you recognize. Recognition, as I like to say, is a lower order thinking than analysis, than synthesis, than some of these higher order thinking that the ACT is actually testing. But if you treat the ACT as if it's an identification test, you're going to get in big trouble. So you've got to adjust the way that you approach the test in order to score higher. So if we dig a little bit deeper into this idea of how high school tests work, recognition is the idea that you remember seeing a detail at some point in the passage. And a lot of students swap out whatever the question is asking on the ACT for a different question. And the different question is, did the passage say this? That is total suicide on the ACT because oftentimes, if not 90% of the time, every answer choice in your ACT reading question is somewhere in the passage. The question is really asking which of these is the answer to the question, not which of these did the passage mention. So if you've swapped out that kind of lower level or lower order thinking, recognition, ding, 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 oh, I totally remember that, that's gotta be right. It's not gonna work here though. Now I'm gonna to come to the second point. You need to go back, go back, go back, and double check your work. Now I know that this is my number one secret tip for the reading section that I've done on my YouTube channel before, but it's so important that you're going back to the passage and verifying your answers on the ACT reading section. Now I have a lot of students who come to me and they say, Brooke, you tell me I'm supposed to go back, go back, go back, but I did such a close reading the first time that by the time I get to the questions, I don't have time to go back all the time. So how in the world am I supposed to do that? I understand that the ACT is a very fast test, but what this means is you essentially are going to have to choose one, two, or even three passages to skim or to read quickly or to somehow muscle your way through at a faster pace. 
Your goal when you first read is not to remember every detail. And this is a mistake that a lot of students make because you've been trained in English class, again, to memorize everything and then show up on test day and take the test. You have created this pattern of learning that has forced your brain into a corner and that isn't helping you on this exam. You need to change your ways. And so the best way to do that is to start to understand that your reading should be mapping out information. It should be summarizing and mapping things out and saying, this is here, this is here, this paragraph's about this, this paragraph's about this. All you need to know is where to go back to because these questions are so detail-oriented that if you're not playing the scavenger hunt game, you're not in the game. You are going to lose, okay? So you've gotta be going back, going back, going back and triple double checking every little detail. And in order to do that, you need to know where to go. And then the third thing that I'm gonna say is that I want you guys to read the question and not treat this as a multiple choice test. As I always like to say, you want your best brain at the ACT. You don't want your eighth grade brain, you don't want your lazy brain, you want your best brain. You wanna trick yourself into working as hard as possible on this test so the smartest part of you shows up at test day. In order to do that, what I want you guys to do is stop treating this test like a multiple choice test. If you've ever taken a vocabulary quiz in school, you might have noticed that when it's open answer, it's often a lot harder. For example, if your teacher reads aloud scintillate and says define it, right, and get out a blank sheet of paper and write it down, that's a lot harder than if she gives you a multiple choice piece of paper and says scintillate and then says sparkle with wit or humor, curtail, compare, or project, you can look at those four words and say, oh yeah, sparkle with wit or humor, I remember that one, right? It jogs your memory. The problem is on the ACT, there are going to be lots of answer choices that jog your memory because it's going to mention a bunch of things that are somewhere in the passage. But all these things are not the answer to the question. So they turn on all of your little like red flags that say identification, identification, and your little brain is going crazy thinking it recognizes everything. You have so much recognition going on because you remember these little details, but that doesn't make the answer choice right. And so to avoid that power of suggestion, so to speak, what I want you guys to do is read the question and then go back and try to answer it and pretend like it's not multiple choice. Something happens when we don't approach a test in multiple choice mode and when we instead approach the test as if it's open answer. And that is that your brain works harder. It's like a secret trick to get yourself to work harder. So if I had a question like this one, number nine, it can be most reasonably inferred that the narrator's discovery that an error has been made in constructing the bookshelves is for him a source of, I'm gonna go back in the passage. I'm gonna find the exact moment where he's constructing the bookshelves and he realizes an error has been made. And I wanna see what he considers that. Does he consider it inspiration? Is he mad about it? Is he embarrassed? What's going on? So to work harder and push your brain, you're not gonna look down at the answer choices immediately. You're gonna read the question, then you're gonna go back to the passage. And then I'm gonna come back to the question with my perfect answer. And I'm gonna line it up with what we have. The ACT reading section is really just a scavenger hunt. Most of the questions aren't that hard, actually, if you go and find the right detail. So most of the challenge of this test is being able to find all the right details in a limited amount of time. So that's about it for my big tips for the ACT reading section. And obviously more goes in to going from a 24 to a 36 than just those tips, but those are the baseline. And from there out, what you wanna be doing is taking real practice tests and then going over your tests and then reviewing sort of trends of the tests and strategies and things like that. The student that I worked with, like I said, I did one lesson with him and then he did our online course. And then I did one last lesson with him kind of before his test. So I just did a couple of lessons with him. But once he adjusted his mindset, once he realized that he was guessing because he wasn't going back to the passage, because he was just approaching it the same way that he approached tests and quizzes at school, when he stopped doing that, boom, things started to happen and he walked away with a perfect 36 on the reading section. So. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.